Hi guys, um, this will be my first episode in my mead making series and I have a few disclaimers. Um, first of all, the video quality of this isn't as good as I would like it. Mainly because uh, my kitchen is very small and cramped. I live in a small uh, student apartment uh, for the University of Oslo and it's the kitchen isn't really made to make videos in uh, I can hardly cook in it and I actually thought about just cleaning the kitchen out putting everything in the living room to make it a more clean workspace but making meat is actually a quite simple process and I want to show that even if you have a kitchen as horrible as mine you can still you can still make mead um, and the product will hopefully turn out quite well so I decided to go with it as is, and I don't really have the money to re-record this episode. And another disclaimer is that this, this episode is a voiceover. Personally, I don't like voiceovers. I think they have a tendency to sound quite, quite bland and boring. But uh, I recorded the videos with sound, but the sound got distorted and and a lot of background noise. and. I wasn't happy with it, so it's better with the voiceover, but it's not as good as I would like it. And make sure you stay tuned for the end of the video, because there I will put um, another video explaining more what we'll be doing in the upcoming episodes, and uh, the process of spicing, and what spices I have chosen and why. Please hit that like and subscribe buttons, and I read all the comments to my videos, and I respond to everything if it's a question or if it needs a response, <laughs> I guess. So don't hesitate to write with any questions or if I mess up somewhere, just tell me where I'm wrong and I'll try to correct it. Okay, so this is what we'll need. Uh, for this recipe we'll be needing 8 kilograms of honey and uh, I'm using this Norwegian honey. It was a little bit more expensive but the taste of it is really nice. Um, I'll be showing you a bit more of that later. Uh, and then you need 19 liters of clean water. Here in Oslo we have very clean water, but I've still boiled it and let it chill to room temperature overnight. And then you will be needing this. Uh, this is a sanitizer. Um, I actually don't really like this one. I've ordered a new one because this one you need to rinse off. And I want something where you can actually just leave it on. Um, and then you will need this. This is a hydrometer. So you can check your specific gravity to see how much sugar is in your solution. So you know approximately how much alcohol will be in it when you're done. And then I bought this. This is a mead yeast pack from a company called Prestige in Malmö, Sweden. Um, and they put this together with yeast and nutrients and stuff uh, specifically for making mead. So I've heard good things about it and it's supposed to be, be really good for newbies like me because it's small packages so you can't miss those anything. So hopefully it will work well. And then I'll be using this. This is just a digital thermometer. Uh, to keep track of the honey so you don't accidentally boil it. Um, you don't need this, but I think it makes things easier and you don't risk destroying your honey. And then I got this at Ikea. It's just a big 10 liter pot. It's turned out actually to be a bit too small, so I had to boil my honey in two different batches, as you will see later. And then, of course, all of this is brand spanking new, but either way, even if it's new, you should still wash it and sanitize it properly. Uh, so you make sure you don't contaminate it with anything. And then this is the last thing you'll be needing, which is just a big plastic food grade bucket uh, with a hole in the top uh, for our water stopper thingamajig. And this is where we we'll mix everything together and where the mead will live for the next month to two months. We'll see how long it takes. And now we'll be adding the honey to our pot this was crystallized when I got it, so I just left it in some lukewarm water for half an hour to 40 minutes, just to get it a bit more liquidy. As you can see, it's still kind of refusing to leave this bucket, but just give it a few shakes and then it starts pouring. So this first batch, I did six kilograms of honey. And then I will do the rest later. I couldn't fit it all in this pot. This pot is a bit too small. Some parts of this video I've sped up a bit because 
it's not that interesting to watch. So now I'm just adding the honey. Um, and as you can see on these batches, you see it's a, still a bit crystallized at the top. That's my fault. I didn't want to fill the water bath too much because uh, I wasn't sure these containers were completely watertight and I don't want to didn't want to let in lukewarm water into the containers. So, um, And as you guys can see, I'm in a very small kitchen. I'm very cramped here. <laughs> if you guys have the luxury of having a normal sized kitchen, um, this will be a lot easier for you. But I'm just trying to do this with just the bare necessities and see if we can actually get some meat out of it. And hopefully we will move on to a bit more professional production later on. This is the honey we'll be using. Um, Norwegians call it Lynghonning. In Sweden we call it Junghonning. Uh, English, I think you call this flower heather or common heather. Um, and it makes a really nice honey with a very kind of woody taste to it. It tastes a bit foresty, if you can say that. And I think it will work really well with the flavors we'll be adding to the meat later. So what we're doing here, I've just added a bit of clean water to the honey buckets, the containers, and I'm just shaking around a bit to try to make get as much of the honey out. Since it's quite expensive, it's nice not to waste any of it. And the recipe is quite specific, so we're going to try to add as much as we can. So now we're slowly starting to add heat to our mixture. Uh, now it contains 6 kilograms of honey and roughly 4 liters of water. This is where I actually messed up a bit. Uh, I didn't calculate for the water that was in the containers that I just shook. So you're going to see later where I actually mess up a bit, but hopefully it will still be fine. Uh, the end result is that I made 26 liters of meat instead of 25. So... Hopefully it won't matter in the end. But we're slowly bringing this up, making sure we don't burn it, taking it very slow since it's our first time. So now this has been on the stove for roughly 10 minutes. We have been slowly raising the temperature. And as you can see, most of the honey is actually liquefied. And you can see it has a very nice golden color. And this is where the thermometer comes in handy because you can keep checking your temperature making sure you're not going over our aim is to be between 40 and 50 degrees celsius so here i'm just checking the temperature so far we have a bit bit of a way to go here i'm just showing you the temperature we're at 43.6 degrees celsius um, and i've been kept it here for 10 to 15 minutes and you can see it in Fahrenheit here. It's 105, 107 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're keeping it here until we're absolutely sure all the honey has to salt. And now that it's done, we're adding it to our bucket. So this is the first batch with 6 kilograms of honey and roughly 4 liters of water. Slowly adding it to the bucket, making sure we don't spill anything. Here I'm adding the second batch. This is 2 kilograms of honey and roughly 2 liters of water. And then we'll just mix it together into the bucket. Now it's time to add our water. So these are 5 liter flasks, jugs, I don't know, bottles, whatever you would like to call them. Um, and I'm just adding them slowly, trying not to spill anything, especially of the honey mixture that's already inside. So that was the first one. This is the second one. Trying to add it slowly without making a mess. It's actually harder than it looks. And this here is the last bottle. And here you see where I mess up a bit since I didn't account for the water that was in the honey yards. I actually messed up here. You see me stop and I should have stopped there. But I thought, oh, well, I'll just add it. And then I added it. And then I realized it made 26 liters instead of 25. But, and now this is just sped up. It's just me trying to aerate it a bit, trying to get as much air into the mixture as possible. And, of course, mixing the honey and the water together. Here I actually tried rehydrating the yeast. 
So what I did is that I got, this is still a bit too warm the water, but I got it down to 37.5 degrees. Um, and then I added the wine nutrients from the meat pack. But as you can see on the yeast pack, it says that you're just supposed to add it to the must. So we actually didn't need to do this, but as I understand it, I didn't do any harm. It just didn't do any good either. So I add the yeast as well to the water. And then we started around and I actually missed filming me adding this water to the to the must, but it's not that complicated. I just added it to it. And here you can see me checking the specific gravity. Um, this one says that it's in the upper levels of a dessert wine, but the specific gravity is 1.110. So hopefully that will give me roughly 14% of alcohol when this is done. So now we're at the last step of this first part. And as you can see, I added water to the water stopper. Mine has a line going through it that says max, but I guess halfway up in both the cylinders should be fine. And then you need to make sure you have a tight seal on your bucket so you don't get any air leaking in because that could ruin the entire batch. And now you just need to put this somewhere where it's dark and you don't disturb it anything because it needs to sit quietly for itself uh, until the yeast process, the fermenting process is completely done. So nice. Okay, so that was the first step in our process of making mead. Um, and now this needs to sit for some time, I'm not sure yet. Some people say one month, some people say three months. But we'll let it sit until the fermentation is done. Until we have reached the desired alcohol content or until all the sugars are gone. And the next step we'll be doing will be called racking, which is just the process of transferring the mead from the container it is now away from all the dead yeast and stuff like that until onto a different container. What I will be using is this is this is just a plastic five liter bottle. Um, the same you saw me pouring water from. And I will be transferring into five of these since I made 25 liters and these are five liters. That will hopefully be five. Um, and in these I will also add my my spices because I will be making five different kinds uh, of mead. And this is a tip someone told me um, and I actually find it very helpful. And to quote Adam Savage, the difference between science and just messing about is writing it down. So what I did, I, I just went to the closest bookstore and I got a notebook. So this is my official mead notebook where I just this isn't pretty, it's not meant to be pretty. It's just so you know what you did and when. So I have put down the exact recipe. And for this, it's eight kilograms of Norwegian Jung Honung. Uh, and I even wrote where I got it, where the bees are from, everything like that. And I wrote down the type of water I used and what I did to the water. I wrote down the yeast and exactly what I did with the yeast before I added it and exactly how I did to warm up the honey everything because yeah of course it's easy to remember it right after you've done it but for example if this one turns out really well in a year then you won't be able to remember it so then you need to go back into your book and just check uh, exactly what you did so you can fix any mistakes you did or you, so you can remake it if it turned out well and also it's really important because I actually forgot that first. Write down all your times and dates so you know exactly when you when you made it and when you racked it and when you bottled it. So you know exactly the process and how to do to recreate it or how to fix it if it didn't turn out quite the way you wanted it to. Okay, so what we'll be doing with the the musk when it gets when it's done fermenting is that, as I said, we'll be racking it into these bottles. And then I will also add these to these bottles. I will add different spices or fruits, depending on what flavors we want. So I will be doing one sour, where I will be adding a little bit of honey to it. So it still has some sweetness because the recipe I've made now is supposed to be really dry and not that much sugar left in it. And for what I will be adding exactly to to the meat after the racking process, you will uh, 
have to see the next episode, see what that is. And I'll put that episode up as soon as I film it. And now we're just waiting, waiting for the mead to ferment. Um, but I will be making two different forest tastes. I will be making one sour one, one sweet one, and one that I can't seem to remember right now. And I think they will turn out really well, especially with this honey that we've been using. Yeah. And thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode.